Hello, this is Tim from Fairplay Now on the 30th of December 2023. So getting very close to the end of the year and this is likely to be my last video of 2023. Gonna have tomorrow and the next day off and after that normal service will be resumed on the 2nd of January when I'll be on sort of every day or at least most days with a video for you. But uh, as it's this time of year, the end of the year, we're coming into 2024 very shortly, which is gonna be a big year. We're gonna have a general election here in the UK at some point during the year. Of course, we've got the uh, US presidential election in 2024 as well. And no doubt, all kinds of things are gonna be happening. But uh, what I thought I'd do, just as something a little bit different and uh, a bit of fun or whatever, uh, is I wanna give you kind of predictions, my own predictions on a few things that I kind of think might happen. Uh, they're not gonna be, uh, you know, complete predictions. What I'll probably do uh, or will be doing is kind of mentioning a few things and then just saying what the level of probability is with zero being no chance at all and 10 being kind of 100% likely kind of thing uh, in my mind at least and then you can compare that with your own thoughts and see how they compare with mine. So let's kick off. We've got 10 of these predictions. So number one is the elections i'm going to focus on the uk election general election uh and a lot of people sort of say it's going to be kind of very soon or as soon as we get pretty much as soon as we get into 2024 or only a few months in there uh personally i don't think that's the case uh, i think ideally the powers that shouldn't be would like to bring the general elections back to kind of May sort of time, but uh, Sunak and uh, his lot will probably want to uh, keep things going as long as they possibly can, stay in power as long as they possibly can, because, uh, uh, well, that's what tends to happen. Politicians who know they're pretty much 100% certain to lose a general election always take it down to the wire. So uh, Sunak is gonna be here as PM for pretty much the whole of this year. I'd have thought that's what I'll say. Uh, why do I say that? Well, it's what Major did in 97. It's what Brown did in 2010. They just take it right the way down to the wire. Uh, although probably they won't leave it quite as late as December. Uh, which is the maximum they can go to legally. Uh, they'll sort of um, you know, probably do it, call the election maybe a month, a couple of months before that. So uh, my sort of thoughts is likelihood of a October, November general election here in the UK, eight out of 10. So that's my thoughts um, with kind of one in either May or the spring or one in December being more like a two or three out of ten uh, so that's what I'm gonna go for uh, of course uh, when we do get to the election whenever it might be uh, I think a Labour victory is gonna be probably a seven out of ten uh, very very likely Labour victory uh, the sad thing about it is the only reason why they are going to win the general election is because as i saw someone write the other day is for no other reason that they're not the conservatives <laughs> they've certainly got nothing in their own right to commend them you know as a party to vote for uh, and a party to get behind and support you know they're just complete and utter uh idiots really um starmer is totally lacking in charisma and any sort of leadership ability they've proved themselves to be an absolutely awful party of opposition during the last few years of course and yeah i just think it'd be 
it's a travesty, really, that the only real alternative we've got at the moment is them, because as bad as a conservative gov- the Conservative government has been, I think a Labour one under Starmer will be even worse. But I'll say that the chances of them winning is a 7 out of 10. Uh, there could be a hung parliament. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. It would be nice if, say, the Liberals, you know, if they got their act together, they could sort of uh, become a, a strong opposition to Labour on the sort of left wing side of things. And then the Reform Party could be a strong opposition to the Conservatives on the right wing side of things. And between all of that lot happening, it could well be a hung parliament uh, with either um, the Conservatives getting back in, but with Reform as coalition partners or supporters uh, or Labour with Liberal support. Uh, Either way, uh, the main party is going to be sort of uh, held back from doing anything too extreme and stupid, but hopefully by uh, the lesser party they've got to go into coalition with. Uh, So that would be my best case scenario personally, because it means there's no one party uh, with overall power, of course, you could under uh, you could say they're all the same. They're all sort of uh, uh, towing the same line, the same narrative. At the end of the day, there's that factor. Um, who knows? But you know, if we've got to suffer the, these idiots, I'd rather it be a hung parliament rather than an outright victory for any one party. That's what I'm all I'm saying on that at the moment. And I think the likelihood of a hung parliament might be a six out of ten. Uh, so moving on away from politics and elections, uh, chances of them them sort of uh, reigniting the whole Lurgy thing yet again in 2024, uh, I think that's now down to only a 3 out of 10. Uh, of course, they're going to try it, but being successful as it, at it as they were in 2020, I think it's only a 3 out of 10. There's just too many people who now uh, smell a rat about the whole 2020 nonsense, 2021 nonsense, and um, they just wouldn't have it again, or at least I hope they wouldn't have it again. I think they have tried to reignite things a few times during this year, and it just hasn't flown. And uh, I think as we move forward, uh, that's, you know, the chances of anything kind of like that happening again, just lessons and lessons. So uh, I'm going to put that down at a 3 out of 10. So uh, uh, my next prediction, number four, is chances of another PSYOP. Uh, Well, that's quite a lot more high. Uh, Chances of something, who knows what it might be, but the chances of another PSYOP of some description, probably a 9 out of 10, I would say. Uh, knowing what these people are like. Uh, number five, uh, justice for the Lurgy perpetrators. Um, sadly, at the moment, I think that's probably only going to be a two out of ten. Uh, that's one of the biggest bugbears, isn't it? Uh, all of these people who uh, kind of perpetrated the whole nonsense just seem to be getting away with it don't they uh, and not just getting away with it uh, actually getting medals we've seen uh, the new year's honours list that we have in this country at this time of year uh, where people become sirs and dames and get OBEs and MBEs and all of that sort of stuff uh, that all happens at this time of year and I see uh, Savage Jabba as I call him that's not his real name but uh, uh, a very appropriate name, I think you will agree. Old Savage Jabbers getting some sort of gong, uh, as is some professor who was very pro lockdown. I can't remember his name. It wasn't uh, Ferguson, but it was someone kind of like him who was equally as much a sure as Ferguson. And this person is apparently getting a gong as well, uh, which can be annoying. Uh, of course, but uh, just what I do is, or what I do, not suggesting you, know, you sort of think the same way, of course, but the way I look upon these things, it's like Nazis 
getting iron crosses, isn't it? Uh, just means absolutely nothing. Uh, you know, we all know how bad they were, and the fact that they were given sort of shiny gongs before the end of the war uh, means absolutely nothing. Um, just as a little aside to that, uh, especially if you're sort of German or of German descent, uh, I'm not saying that uh, ordinary brave German soldiers in the war didn't deserve iron crosses. I'm talking about the uh, uh, yeah the horrible out and out sort of uh, fascists who uh, got that particular award and probably sort of cheapened it for the proper German soldiers actually. Uh, just adding that in as a bit of an aside, but overall you know it's like uh, fascists getting awards and that's the way I look upon these people getting these awards now so might be a, a, a way to look at it to prevent yourself getting too irate about the whole thing uh, that's the way I deal with it anyway uh, but justice for these lurgy perpetrators in 2024 two out of ten uh, let's hope as further years go by that uh, those chances grow, at least for some of them. So, number six, uh, chance of the rest of the population waking up to the truth and becoming like us in 2024. Again, probably a disappointing uh, two out of ten on that one. Uh, but, uh, looking upon that kind of thing uh, in a more positive light, uh, this is prediction number seven, the chance of maybe another two to five percent of the general population waking up to the truth uh well i'd put that at a much higher eight out of ten uh yeah i really do think we are making strides more and more people are waking up are they all going to wake up at the same time no uh can we get a few more of them questioning the narrative in 2024 absolutely so eight out of ten on that one um, and then more of a personal one for number eight, uh, chances uh, of me and others like me carrying on with what we're doing to achieve the last one, number seven, you know, you know helping others to sort of wake up more and more. Uh, well, absolutely, 10 out of 10, I'm not going anywhere. And I'm sure uh, people like Lee, Marty, sort of Nigel Watson, and all of the rest of the people who are speaking out, uh, none of us are going anywhere. So the last two predictions out of this uh, list of 10 uh, would be uh, chances of things being overall better by the end of 2024 compared to what they are now. Um, well, I'm going to put that as a 7 out of 10. Um, to be honest with you, 2023 hasn't been a bad year for me at all. It's been a pretty good year, really. Uh, I've managed to do a lot, uh, and I, th I can just see positivity happening. I think we've come a long way. Us in the freedom movement, we've come a long way. We've achieved a lot, and I think that's only going to be increasing in 2024. And... I know the powers that shouldn't be will be throwing whatever they can at us, but I do genuinely believe, you know me, I'm a, uh, an optimist after all, and I do think we will be in a better position this time next year than we are now. And I've put the chances of that at a 7 out of 10. And then conversely, uh, my 10th prediction, chances of us being in a worse position this time next year than we are now, uh, I'll put that at a sort of three or maybe a four out of 10 at the most. So uh, I'm confident and optimistic that uh, overall things will improve and that things won't go sort of downhill, uh, sort of overall anyway. They might in some areas, uh, but overall, I think we will be in a better position than we are now. So yeah, just a little list of my 10 uh, predictions there. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments section below. Uh, would you agree with those? Would you put some of those uh, at sort of a little bit more 
uh, sort of um, numbers out of 10 than I did or would you sort of go lower than I did out of 10 uh, let me know in the description box below do you think I'm sort of more or less on the money there or do you sort of vastly disagree with me on some of those uh, I'll be interested in reading your comments and yeah like I say I'm not really going to be making a video tomorrow or New Year's Day unless something really drives me to do so but all in, in all likelihood I'll be back on the 2nd of February uh, in the brand new year of 2024 and until then I'll leave it have a great New Year's Eve New Year's Day and I'll talk to you soon Tim from Fairplay now thanks for watching